I'm Christy Woodson Harvey, and welcome to our latest episode of Blank to Beautiful, where we are talking to the um, extraordinary father son duo of Ken and Duke Tate for our special Father's Day edition of Blank to Beautiful. This is such a treat to have you here. Thank you. Um, Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. So, I'm going to tell you just a little bit about. Um, Ken and Duke. So Ken, um, you know, as an extraordinary architect, he is the winner of the 2019 Florida ICAA Chapters Meisner Award for residents over 10,000 square feet, the ICAA's 2008 Schutz Award, and the 2018 Pinnacle Award, and the 2018 Lux Reader's Choice Red Award for Best Classical House, a three-time winner of the Southern Progress Corporation Southern Home Award. Um, and many, many more. It's just amazing. I could talk about him all day. But he received his Bachelor of Architecture from Auburn University in 1975, um, briefly practiced in Dallas, Texas, and then started his own firm in 1984 in Mississippi. He has designed estates in 16 states, including California, Florida, Colorado, North Carolina, and Tennessee, to name a few, and also the Bahamas. And his work has been published everywhere in the world, um, including Architectural Digest, Veranda, The Rob Report, Forbes, Southern Accents, which I saw and I missed that magazine so much. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. Yeah, that was a good magazine. It was such a good magazine, yeah. such a good magazine. And so his son, Duke, manages um, the West Palm Beach office and is also a writer. So this was the perfect combination for Blank to Beautiful because we got a two for one, a writer and an architect. Um, but he authored his first book of fiction, The Opaque Stones, in 2014 while living in California. He studied at the University of Mississippi and later the University of New Orleans. And Duke and Ken wrote The Alchemy of Architecture, Memories and Insights from Ken Tate, together. So this is so exciting. Um, <laughs> Duke lives in South Florida where he likes to fly fish, travel, cook Asian food, and read, which is great. So thank you guys so much for being here. Um, I know you're so busy and we really appreciate it. And so I just wanted to start off by asking, you know, my mom and I run Design Chic together. We have for 10 years. So as a father's son, what is it like to work together? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Oh, oh my God! Uh, Duke, Duke is—he's uh, very creative, and uh, he has so many great ideas that I don't. As an architect, I, I don't have the kind of ideas he has, like marketing and PR and uh, social media. He got—he got, he got a, the firm on. He put us on Instagram and Facebook. He does a very. We good weren't job. doing any of that. I just, the way I got work is just. You know, sending everything to the magazines and, and having books done, which is very expensive mm. and very time consuming. And, and uh, Duke, you know, the social media thing, I've gotten work without doing any of that, just through social media that yeah. Duke has done. So, yeah, it's a new world yeah. with it's a uh, new world. It's a new world with digital marketing. You know, there's so much more you can do with email marketing and, um, and you know, the decision to, um, to branch out and open a second office in Palm Beach. Uh, our first office was in Palm Beach on the island. Now our new office is in West Palm, but we uh, grew up going there. Um, you know, my grandfather, Erwin Tate, dad's father, uh, retired there on the island. So we it's, it's really just uh, a beautiful place architecturally and design-wise, as you know, I'm sure, running a design blog. Um, it's just a real... Uh, it's a design mecca, you know, um, there's a lot of really talented people and beautiful architectural history with Addison Meisner and Maurice Fatio. And um, so it was really, it was both of our decision to go there, but um, you know. Well, Duke led the way. Yeah. Duke said. I made him go. You know, I was <laughs> basically, what I did was uh, being from Mississippi and not having, not being in a big city or having that kind of uh client base like in new york or la sure. so i what i did is i simply started traveling to do the work so if someone would call me from another state i said when do you want me to come you know they go what do you travel i go when when do you want me to be there you know, <laughs> yeah, there's no, that's just the way i've always been I, it's in my even the california project 
they say, well, isn't it hard for you to get out here? I go, no, I love going out there. But, you know, it's all about the passion of it. Not, oh, is it inconvenient for you to get on a plane and fly for four hours to LA? No, not at all. Not to do a nice house in Brentwood, California, big deal. I totally get it. I mean, I go on these yeah. big week book tours and people are like, well, I mean, do you want to travel like that? Aren't you tired? And I'm like, well, I have to go where my readers are, right? I mean, yeah, that's, yeah. Right. That's, that's what you do. That's the job. Well, you know, as an architect, we do a house that takes three or four years. Yeah. You're you're going out there quite a bit. You know? <laughs> so it's no, I mean, I do 80 speaking engagements a year. So oh, you and I probably yeah, blast each yeah. other in the airport. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, well, the idea that Duke had was uh, what I'm leading up to is the fact that Duke had the idea, which I, stupid me, you know, had never thought of it. Go somewhere where there's a, a strong client base in one area. And I don't like big cities, so I'd never live in a big city. But uh, Palm Beach, I love it. Uh, I love the architecture, like he said. My father, you know, lived there for a while when he retired. But anyway, so. You know, we went down there, Duke did all the PR and, and went to parties and went to, and, and then he set up meetings for me with different people. And and we got our first big house in Palm Beach and it was just through social media and uh, meetings. Yeah. But no, no books or magazines or, and we got this one we're working on right now, which I'm very, unfortunately, I'm very, that's what I'm focused on right now. So my brain is only on that. <laughs> that's great. You, know, you can ask anybody. That's that's so probably like how when you write a book, I, Christy, like <laughs> you know the wheels are turning and you're you know you're always thinking about it and what the characters are doing and you yeah. know it's similar with designing a house. I'm not an architect, but I know Dad's process and it's, I think the creative process is kind of universal that way. It is. You know, it, it, you can translate writing a book or or painting a painting. So it's a similar thing, you know. Except, yeah. I'm, except I'm obsessed. <laughs> so that would be the difference. Well, I remember my mom always. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. You speak, please. No, I was going to say my mom will always say, "I can tell that you're not really here right now." <laughs> yeah, right. Like that. I'm, yeah, I'm somewhere else. Yeah. <laughs> so what I do with my house is I get into the like I'm actually creating the house from within it. You know, it's like organic and it's. And as I do one thing, then that leads to another, and I build it from within. I also have a vision of the end product, but I'm also organically building it. It's working from both ends, you know. That's the way I design. So it's very interesting. In fact, right now, I also did an outline for this house, uh, a, a fictional narrative, which I've always done. I did it in college. Even. Yeah, he's doing more writing, Christy. Like, uh, you would really like this fit. Fiction narrative. I'll, I'll email it. I will you. send it. I'm getting it today. Yeah, I'll email well, it. Well, my writer is Susan Sully. I don't know if you know her, but she writes uh, okay. Southern books. Yeah. She's my writer. She wrote my last book. But she, I, I come up with the fictional narrative, and then she just fleshes it out. So, That's so cool. kind of a little, this was a little novella. You know, it's it has a whole fictional narrative about how, what happened, how the house originated, where a time frame. It's all fictional, but what it does, it gives me a framework for how to proceed and, and a, some logic to why this room is this and that's that, you know. So it's not all monochromatic, you know. In other words, one room might be a fancier and one may be more rustic, or, and there's usually some narrative that is a reason for that. This one's very interesting. We'll send it to you after this. I mean, I'm getting it today. From the day. I'm getting the final one today. So I've never heard of such a thing in someone's creative process. And that is absolutely fascinating. Yeah, I did it. I started it in at Harvard. Wow. And uh, well, back then, you know, what well, it still is modernism, you know. And yeah. so there's no, a fictional narrative would be considered immoral to have a <laughs> fictional narrative. I mean, because it's not, <laughs> it's not honest. It's not, right. it's not uh, foreign follows function. You know, you're like creating a story. It's storytelling. And that's what you're yeah. doing with the house anyway. Yeah. So I mean, that's what, what you're trying to do. I mean, it yeah. makes perfect sense to me because that's what you're you're wanting to build a house that tells a story. It did to me too, but nobody talks to me. You know, what I did is what I, if you persist and people go, oh, I've heard of that. Well, I was the one, you know. That, well, I came you know, up with it. heard about it. <laughs> 
That's incredible. Well, and that's also an excellent segue into the alchemy of architecture, is. Um, which is an amazing book. Um, all of your books are, and I'll be showing all of them. But this, this is, is Derek Woolley, you know. I mean, oh, well, you know, narrated it, and he keep going. I'm sorry, but he wrote it. Well, and that's what I was going to say. I mean, I think that's absolutely extraordinary that you know you were able to collaborate on this project, and that Duke, you were able to take your writing because I mean, you've written many novels like how many oh no no uh, some nonfiction because i had uh i had lyme disease really bad actually i went to boarding school up in kent connecticut and i got bitten by a tick up there and i i got very sick with lyme disease and back then nobody knew what it was so i had a real bit long journey getting it well from that but um now i've i've got uh maybe three fiction in the works um uh Maybe I don't even know, Christy. Maybe one out that's fiction right now because we, we removed the opaque stones because uh, my editor and publisher, um, Holly Warden in England, is um, she's basically reworking the opaque stones, you know. Uh, it, it, I, I self published it a long time ago uh, in 14, and nobody did self publishing, and it was rough. and uh, so when I started working, when we started working with Holly, she was like, we'll take, uh, let's take this book and, and re-edit it and proof it and, you know, uh, make it a good book. So that's, we're working on that now. Um, but yeah, uh, dad um, has always, has always liked to write. I mean, he wrote his thesis at Auburn, Architecture in Search of a Soul, yeah. was, um, you know, a lot of writing. No and, and, and so... So I knew there was I knew there was potential there for I mean really what this was not uh, my goal was to share Dad's wisdom and knowledge about his craft with the world. That's what we that's what our goal was. Um, we didn't want to write a memoir that was this thick and was you know like uh, I went and ate a sandwich and. 1984 at, you know, at this restaurant at this time. I mean, I, I've read a lot of biographies and I personally, just me, unless somebody lived a very interesting life, like Sir Richard Burden or somebody, uh, you know, who was like, you know, some very interesting person. I find biographies like that, me personally, to be kind of boring. Um, I always want to know like uh, more, I want to know what the person's philosophy is and what, what I want to know how events in their life were meaningful to their journey yes. and right. how they, how they shaped them as a person, as an individual. So that we focused on that and we kept it kind of short and sweet. And uh, anyway, I, uh, yeah, Deb did do a lot of writing for this book. He, he, he worked over everything I wrote and, um, but what do you want well, to say I mean, about but, Well, Duke had the whole idea. Because I'm busy. I'm obsessed. I mean, I'm doing film. <laughs> and he goes, let's write a book. I go, oh, when? <laughs> and so then he says, oh, no, no big deal. I'll just uh, interview you, and you. You can just talk. And I'll, and so I just talk. Basically, you wouldn't believe it. I'd just be talking. And then he'd come back, and it would be all put into some kind of order and form and you know, and then he arranged it in sequence in the book. And and so it was amazing because I had no idea where it was going. I was a little negative, you know, like, well, nobody's going to, uh, you know, you have to, <laughs> I've got to throw in some, I really wanted way more interesting. I mean, I wanted some really funny stuff or things about clients. You can't talk about clients. No. Top but, secret, right? But, <laughs> you know, I'm pretty old. So when I get, I mean, a few years I could, and then I just go to Mexico, you know. Right. <laughs> Or, I mean, or Duke can, or you, since you are writing fictional narratives too. Oh, fictional, we could just analyze the characters. Yeah, just change the names. I wonder who that was. Yeah, they do that at the first of every novel. I know you've done it, that none of these people are real, <laughs> even though it might sound like my neighbor. <laughs> oh, my the neighbor that made me mad. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's so true. So do, did you ever consider architecture as a career? You know, I was always better at uh, 
marketing and and right. and words. You know, I was always right. good at um, you know anything that was like um, you know I, I'm pretty good at computers. So yeah. um, real good. You know uh, anything that was was sales or or. Uh, I read all the time. I'm an obsessive reader. Well, I read. I read a hundred pages. Well, we're a we're a good pair for this because yeah. I'm real, and then he's verbal. So yeah, and so he can do the verbal thing, and then I can talk about visual in a verbal way. You know? I mean, that's. I think it's an it's a wonderful synergy between the it two. Is. So Ken, do you have a project? I mean, I'm sure that all of your projects sort of become your passion. But do you have one that sticks out to you that you can say, oh, I think that's my favorite? Or is that just not even realistic? Well, they're all, you know, like your children, like if you yeah. have 20 children or 50 children. <laughs> and then you have to pick them. I know it's a cliche, but it's, it's totally true. Because no, it's true. You know, yeah. I'm going to say this every arc. Everyone has a different client, has a different context, a different location program even if they're ones more expensive than the other one sure. one of them might be better in your mind so you can't say which one is but i did gosh i did a house right when i first started it's in jackson that is as good to, if i did it today it'd be it would not be any better really i think it was my third house Okay, well, that was going to be my next question, which I think, you know, also relates to the writing, too. And, you know, Duke, you touched on this about going back and redoing a book that you, you know, had already written. And yeah, there yeah. times I think, I wish I could go back and change this or change that. Is there anything that you, you know, do you ever look back and think, oh, I wish I'd done this differently or I wish I could change this plan or, you know, change this thing about this house? Me? Uh -huh. yes. oh, well, I thought it was what I knew. Oh, uh, well, yes, but a lot of those things don't, maybe I didn't have, you know, maybe the client did it, maybe there was a budget. Uh, I haven't had much of that about my own. I, I've always been very connected to the client and the context and the whole environment and situation of the project. I'm kind of a method actor. Mm -hmm. So I'm like getting into the whole thing. Yeah. So when I see it, it's like a film. If you were an actor, you go, oh yeah, well that was that. And you know, like Marlon Brando on the waterfront, that's that thing, that period. And then over here you have uh, something else and they're like, they're almost different. You're a different person, right. but you still did it. So like you're oh, young. That's a, that is a really good way to look at it. Yeah. You're person yeah. that, that's true that is true yeah when you're written 100 books you'll go yeah but that book was my first book and it still holds a special mm -hmm. place in my heart yeah and, and you know even when i wrote it maybe i have more developed skills but you know there's a certain naivety about it that i it's special you know that i yeah. can't ever i can't go there again so say like i, I did that. That, and that's that and that stands on its own mm -hmm. and this is now i mean i'm doing I just finished a great house on St. Charles Avenue. That's a, you know, Renaissance style house. It's just amazing, but I couldn't have done it when I was younger, but I couldn't do the younger, the ones I did younger now. So see, that's a different, I'm like a different person. <laughs> This is so interesting. I love this. this I don't think is, about it. A, I mean, and you've like answered all my questions without me even asking them, which is just fantastic. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Hey, uh, Christy, <laughs> good. Christy, uh, I'm just curious when you write, because um, I saw I was reading a, a lot of your uh, book summaries. Uh, they look like uh, really good books. I do. I think my wife would love uh, reading them as a beach read or, um, you know, uh, and it'll help she, her learn English. Yes. Because she's, she's my wife's Thai. So she, oh, my gosh. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. She's, she's she, still speaks, in, she speaks English and reads English, but, you know, um, she's still learning, you know, perfecting. Um, well, so, and uh, speaking Southern is different than yes. English, right? Yes. <laughs> I know. That's going to be tough. That's uh, going to be a whole She's going to learn Southern English. <laughs> <laughs> it's different. <laughs> But um, I just was curious, Christy, um, uh, when uh, when you every time you write a book, do you feel like the, the, your last book is your best your best book? Yeah, that's a good. Like question. the uh, uh, is it feel like falling? Yeah, it feels like falling. Feel like yeah. falling. Great title. Yeah, I, I think you do. I mean, the interesting thing is by the time so it feels like falling is out. 
but Under the Southern Sky is coming out in 2021 and it's finished. So I feel like, you know, by the time I am, you know, pu um, publicizing one book, the next one is finished. And so yeah. my, um, I'm sort of split between like, which one yeah. is my favorite? Yeah. Um, but yeah, but I, I love Feels Like Falling. I think it's um, some of my best characters I've ever written, which kind of okay. makes me happy. Oh, um, right, right. Yeah. Yeah, and it's my first standalone in a while. I've done a three book series, so they they oh, all a little bit different. They, but it's it's like Ken said, they're like your children. You know, yeah. they're all yeah. a little different. They all yeah. have a special place in your heart. There's yeah. something that you love about each of them, and it's interesting too. I think there's something, um, you know, I'm sure just like with your homes or your books or whatever it is. There, there is something that resonates with people in a different way in each one. So I'll still yeah. have people that say, you know, your first book was my favorite, or I'll yeah. never love anything like I love the Peachtree Bluff series, or, you know, things like that, because people are, you know, just drawn to things in different ways. So it's an interesting process for sure. Yeah. Right. And That's my cool. house is, since I'm sort of what, what I call a pluralist, yeah, that I like different genres of yeah. architecture, yeah, or not genres, but styles. Is yeah. Great. So I like, I'm always wanting somebody to show up that wants a different style. That's so and that, and wait, that way, I didn't mean to cut you off, but that way it's a clean break to the previous one. And then the research starts, the the method acting, the getting into the role, you see, and it's fun and exciting, see? And you're always challenging yourself creatively. It's challenging, that way you're not just you know, doing one Georgian house after the other. There are people that do that very, very well, like David Easton or somebody. I wish I was him. But, you know, when you're a, you're me, you're you, you have a different approach. And what one doesn't want to do as a creative person is copy someone else's approach. Sure. So you have to learn that yourself. That's like something you do by doing, it, by doing you know. Yeah. Like jump in, the, jump in the deep end with the sharks and, Hopefully you don't lose a leg or a foot while you're doing it. But you do have to learn how to swim on your own. It must have yeah. been really easy to write a book with him. Like the sound bites are <laughs> I mean, well, no, yeah. yeah. Well, he, he talks a lot. He never I, stops talking. Oh no, he edited all the <laughs> great sound bites out. He said you can't say that. <laughs> I love that. Well, mom and I did discuss one of the things that we love about your work is that um, you capture so many different styles so beautifully well. And I think that is extremely rare to be gifted enough that you can really jump from thing to thing and not just have, you know, your one thing that you do really well. Um, you know and you know, that's nice of you to say, but there's so many that I can't shoot and publish. Oh, so yeah. I've done, you know, like I've done great. Uh, I did a great American farmhouse for a famous family that's and it's uh up in i can't say where but anyway they own a whole town so i can't really <laughs> say the town <laughs> that's I, mean, I would love to see that for me they had a kidnapping in their family and they wouldn't let any i couldn't shoot it i couldn't do anything i get and, that uh, yeah and so then i have i've done big federals that were huge that i can't shoot yeah some of our some of uh, our clients uh don't just for privacy. Um, they don't want to have uh, their houses photographed. So, of you know, then, the, you know, then we can't get the the, the house uh, published in a magazine. You yeah. know, which, yeah. um, which is a bummer. But it's that's, understandable. That's, that's, why, yeah, it's understandable. It's why I haven't been in magazines lately. Yeah, <laughs> most of lately. Uh, you know, now my new thing, the new clients are LLCs. I got is that an LLC or is it a what's it not an LLC? Yeah, it's an LLC. An LLC. Mm -hmm. It's an LLC. And that, you're like, oh, you can't put my name on the title block. It's an LLC and this is the number. And I go, okay. It's like, you know, that's where we are. So <laughs> that is an interesting world that we're living in. Um <laughs> Sort of on that note, you know, you're both incredibly accomplished and have done so much. Is there something that is sort of still on your bucket list professionally that you would hope to be oh, able to do or achieve? Or oh, you want to go first? No, you got it. Oh, I want to do a Roman villa on the Pacific. And so the reason I'm doing this is you have so many followers. Surely one of them wants a Roman villa. <laughs> it has to be authentic. We'll put that in the headline. Yeah, it has to be authentic. Villa. It has to be load-bearing stone walls. I mean, there's no concrete you know, okay. or any or steel. It's a load-bearing, authentic Roman villa. <laughs> Lord. I love that. Put it out there. We're going to find one. That's our new goal. Well, somebody's watching. 
And yeah, it needs to be on the Pacific. Call me. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I'll just start the ocean, not on the Pacific Ocean, so he would have to be in Carmel or yeah. Big Sur or you know Los Angeles or San Diego or Laguna, anywhere like along the ocean. Yeah, anywhere on the ocean, I'm fine. I'm not going to argue with him. <laughs> on the ocean, <laughs> got it. Right. <laughs> Great for sunsets. See, on the West Coast, you and you have your loggia, big loggia. And that's European, and you have the sunsets. No, it's spectacular. It really is. We oh, just um, got back. Well, not just because obviously we've been in Corona times, but my last trip, like right before, I was afraid I wasn't going to get home. I was in California, and it is just—it's really beautiful. It's very different. I live on. Yeah, you, you know, live in a great area. Right? Yeah, yeah, that's beautiful. Beautiful. yeah that's I it. would love to live where you live. Not with you, but I mean that. But I would love to live. Well, we're working on a guest house. Know, if I moved there, I would not stalk you or come. You know. We're working on a guest house. My new book is about someone who invites a stranger to live in her guest house. So, I mean, <laughs> it would just work out. I would, be a, I would be a stranger. <laughs> yeah. <sure>. Strange person. Because <laughs> I paint also, so I'd make a mess. Of the guest house. <laughs> <laughs> I throw paint a lot. That's that. a good if you're if you're an architect and you know it's stressful and there's so much you know you're responsible. Yeah. And you're not responsible. I mean, you can kill off people, you know. <laughs> right. I, I mean really it's my, I, you know, my buildings can't move, they can't fall in, they can't leak, they can't condensate, they can't do normal things. <laughs> and so, you know <laughs> so so if you paint like I do, like abstract, mm -hmm. it gets all that out, all that energy. Wow, so you have a lot of creative outlets. That's incredible. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, it helps not to be a criminal. You know, that way you don't go out on the street and hit somebody. Or and you know, <laughs> I just did another interview right before you guys that um, we'll be running also with Mary Kay Andrews. And I asked her what her, like, what she was most proud of. And she was talking about her parents. And she said, Well, I think my parents are proud that I'm not in prison. And so Great. really linked together. <laughs> Me too. I'm proud I'm not in prison. <laughs> no, not a criminal. You know, really well, I have to deal with zoning people. Like right now I'm dealing with, I hope they're not watching. Punk. Okay. 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 But, but anyway, that's my life. <laughs> All right. Duke, what about you? Any professional goals that you are looking toward? Yeah. Me and dad are planning on writing a fictional, uh, a fiction book about an architect and uh, yeah, it should be very interesting. And then um, we're also, I'm working on uh, laying out right now um, his uh, next uh, book, which I'm going to design. Um, nice. And uh, that should be fun for, for, for his houses. We have six unpublished houses and it's going to be in black and white, um, Ken wow. Tate in black and white. And so that should be, a, that should well, be. Well, I realized fun. one day. That I and I was just looking to you know how you can on your phone you can turn things into black and white. Yeah. And I went, God, all my houses look good in black and white. <laughs> I mean, I didn't know really. I never thought about it too much. So you got to do it. Well, that sounds when amazing. I started looking at all my pictures. I have thousands of pictures, and so I started putting them in black and white. And go, oh my God, this is great. And it's so different than looking at a color book. Well, we 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 like we it's both graphic. love. Uh, old black and white movies. Um, we watch a lot of old movies. Um, you know, uh, Cary Grant, uh, Robert Mitchum, all those old film noirs and, and on comedies and everything. So uh, dad loves cinema. And we talk about that in the alchemy and, you know, how cinema relates to architecture. So, uh, you know, a lot of times in design, um, it's all about trying to get, especially with the magazines, trying to get some like yeah. perfect image it's really like uh, it's very crisp and clean and marketable. And uh, what's cool about the black and white is you see uh, subtle shadows and there's more texture. It's, it's just hard to explain, but there's an out, there's another, uh, there's a more artistic side of the same shot of a room that you, that comes through. And um, I think you see it differently. Yeah. You because see you it. don't have the color to reinforce it. Yeah. Yeah. And so you see kind of the architecture straight on. You know? I mean, obviously, we love, we love, oh, I you love know, great uh, 
color photographs. And I love decor you know, too. You know. But you know, it's it's something different and some a new challenge. Yeah, yeah. What? Uh, tell us, Christy. Uh, what? I mean, we may need to go right now, but uh, we were just going to ask you what what yeah. you got, what you're working on right now. Are you taking a break from writing? Uh, do you just take, do you just take off and work on your design blog mainly when you're, uh, or did you? Uh, what do no. you? Do? No, there's no taking off really. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah. I had so my I've had a book a year since 2015, wow. and then wow, that's good impressive. for you. Yeah, so Under the Southern Sky is coming out in 2021, which I'm really excited about. It's sort of, it's um, it's a little bit, I guess, bigger of a book for me. It's my first male protagonist. I also have three female protagonists, but it was, oh. that was fun. And I'm, I'm doing research for my first historical. So that's going to be in a different historical direction. Um, historical yeah. fiction. Yes, historical fiction. Yeah. That's but, cool. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Yeah, and the design blog. I mean, mom and I work on it every day, so it's been great. This new series has been so fun because it's just something different. And I do feel like it's one of those kind of positive things that came out of the quarantine because everyone was looking for video content. And I was like, hmm, this yeah. will be fun. This is yeah. a great way to interact. We love with video content. Yeah, we, yeah. we watch YouTube so much. Yeah, yeah. There's, you there, know, like yeah, the, yeah, that's that was a smart idea, Chrissy. There's a lot and uh, a, a way to keep people entertained during this time, you know, so. Yeah. Wow. Now, tell us where we can find you online because I know everyone's going to want to go follow you and I will be dropping links in the post of Thank all you. of your gorgeous books, where to get them, where to find you um, and just some examples. And then of course the big banner about the project that we are all going to oh, be. Oh, wait, the Pacific house. If you get any calls, people out there just do Christy here, you know, send it to her and she'll forward it onto the contact. I really do. There's a way on here that you can run a banner across and I really want to have like a banner ticking across. Yeah, you can, uh, you basically, we have a design store, uh, Ken Tate Design Store, um, and we sell all of Dad's uh, out of print books, um, signed, um, you know, a lot, of Dad, a lot of Dad's books are out of print. So, um, they all, they all. You know, you can get my books on Amazon or at Lemuria um, in Jackson, Mississippi. They're selling signed books. That's a good store. That's yeah, it is a good store. It is yeah. a good store. Yeah, oh, it's a great. Do they, I'm sure they, you've been there. That's a great store. You know, I've yeah. actually not been to the store, oh. but I have met them at SEBA, at the Southern Independent Bookseller. Oh, store. cool, cool. Yeah, they, <laughs> you met Johnny? Did you Johnny, Johnny? Johnny? Yeah, so I need to go to the store. I would like to go to the store one day. Yeah, it's great. It's yeah. a, I mean, it's like first class independent bookstore, you know. We love all bookstores, but, you know, Johnny, does, he's got a great story. I'm hoping independent bookstores come back, everybody. Come back, independent <laughs> bookstores. I'm doing a show on Wednesday nights with uh, four author friends. And truly, I mean, we, you know, we talk about everything. But the point of the show is to promote independent bookstores. Mm -hmm. so every, yeah, right. we, I mean, because what are we going to do without them? We need our um, We have to have them now. I think we're going into a new era where the big bookstores are Failing because they, I mean, honestly, they just don't do what small bookstores do. Yeah. Well, you guys, this has been so fun. Thank it you is. so much for taking this time. every week or something. It's yeah, fun. we'll just we'll just come back every week, do this again. It'll be like the 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 Harvey and Tate show. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get mom on here. That's what we really should Hang do. On. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Father, 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 daughter, father, father, son. Yeah, we want to meet your mom. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah y'all vlog is great. We were just looking at it. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thanks for, thank you for being a part of it. And um, we'll look forward to seeing you soon. Thank All you right, so thanks, much. Christy. We loved it. <laughs>